Hello, welcome to week 49. 49 of 52. 49 of 52? Yeah. Is that, is, yeah, am, yeah. am I right? Because I, I just I, I pulled that out of the hat. No way. You, <laughs> I just have so much confidence in you that I didn't think you were saying that as a matter of checking. No, I, I, I had a look on my face that said, Emery, is that right? 49? Uh, <laughs> So you've you've done it, man. Forty nine weeks. Thanks yeah. for traveling forty nine weeks with us. If if you just jumped in with us t- two weeks ago or six weeks ago, or this is your first week to yeah, do the podcast, sure. welcome. Thank you guys for being here. Um, we're just walking through the Bible chronologically, and we are nearing the end. And if you yeah. want to, Emery, we just tell us a little bit about the event that we've got coming up. Yeah. So we are planning, just like we did we did this last year. We're planning an event to both celebrate this big milestone accomplishment that yes, you did. It's and a also, celebration. Yeah, and to get together and just share, like, what was awesome about it to you? What did you learn about Scripture? How did you see the Bible differently? Absolutely. And just talk about it and celebrate it. Celebrate so, good exactly. times. Don Come will on. be there singing yeah. that song. Let's have celebration. Yeah, okay. And, <laughs> and so to let us know that that's you, that you believe you're going to finish by the end of the year, you can go on the app We're so under excited. events. It'll say Chronological Bible. Just give us your name and your contact information, and we would love to make sure you get invited to that event. Absolutely. It actually says Chronological Bible Champion. Okay, it doesn't, oh, it doesn't say. It doesn't say. I'm, I'm editing right now. <laughs> it doesn't say yes, champion. Don is Do listen the world. to what Emery says. I'm just being silly. But hey, um, this is a great week uh, that we've just uh, walked through. Um, on December 3rd, uh, Clayton spoke and walked through the first week of Advent at uh, Kirby Church and talked about peace. And I absolutely love the idea that, that he brought forth in his message that talked about the peace that we have comes from God. In the Old Testament, it's actually tied to the idea of making someone whole. So, yeah. or, you mm-hmm. know, like, a, like if, I, if I killed your cattle on accident... I wouldn't just say sorry, because right. we wouldn't be right. we wouldn't you're, be at you're peace. Still out. Right, we're we're we 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 are not at peace with one another because yeah. you're ticked at me because I I ran over your cattle uh, yeah. with my four wheel drive uh, Toyota Tundra, yeah. And uh, so in order to make peace between us, I would have to bring you a cattle. This is an mm-hmm. Old Testament, and once again, they didn't have Toyota Tundras in the Old Testament. I'm on record uh, <laughs> saying that. Uh, but they would bring a bring a cow, and then I would make. I would offer that cow to yeah, you to for, for what I did. And that makes peace yeah. between us. Yeah. And so uh, they would live in a community by making peace with one another in those ways and therefore mm-hmm. be at peace in their community. Spiritually, when you look at the New Testament, Clayton walked yeah. through all this on Sunday. Spiritually, when you look at the New Testament, I could not make peace with God to be right with God. Yeah. I, they're, they're in my sinfulness... Even in my righteousness, which is as filthy rags, the Word of God says in the Mm -hmm. New Testament, I couldn't make myself right with God, so I didn't have peace with God. So Jesus Christ is our peace. Week one of Advent, for us, uh, there's all kinds of different orders that people go through, but we we chose peace for week one of Advent, that Jesus literally is our peace. He is the one that makes us whole. purchased our peace. Yes. Yeah. Mm, mm. So thankful that he is our peace. And so when I try to think of a story, Emery, uh, think of a story. Um, think of a story where you made someone whole um, once again. Um, and, it, it, and, it, and it brought about peace. For me, uh, I grew up in church since I was about six years old. My grandpa picked me up and took me to children's church. Uh, nobody went to church in my family except my great-grandma. And dropped me off. I went to Children's Church, and um, I was kicking a football. And me and my buddies were playing outside. And I kicked that football right through the stained glass window at my church. (laughs) And my parents (laughs) (laughs) described the idea of making another hole (laughs) and uh, said, you will make the church whole in this. Oh my! And uh, it was uh, inexpensive stained glass. We're not talking about uh, something plastic. Right. Or, or this, uh, what would it be? The Sistine Chapel or we're not, we're not, we're not talking some, this is, this is pretty cheap. Uh, Oh, okay. It's pretty cheap uh, stained glass. I think it was 20 bucks. Uh, so for this young lad, I had to 
work off $20, 20 a lot uh, for, for a young cat that was kicking a football yeah. in order to make the church whole, in order to yeah. be at peace. Uh, so that, that's my crazy story of, yeah. of just trying to make someone whole. Yeah, make I tell peace. you. Uh, this is a real thing for me. I really do not like, uh, whatever the opposite of peace, discord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do not like to have discord between people. Mm -hmm. It bugs me like crazy. So my story is, uh, I hadn't been a Christian very long, but, uh, I had a guitar that I had played at an event outside and the weather was pretty humid and hot and it warped it and it needed to be fixed. And I had a uh, friend that I had known for a long time who was not a believer who worked on guitars for me, built guitars for me, and things like that. And I took it, and I dropped it off at his house, and he took a long time to fix it. And uh, when I finally got it back from him, it had a note in there that, that was pretty heavy. You know, I thought you were a Christian. You're taking advantage of me. Ooh, and now, I had planned on paying this guy right. for the re repair. Whatever he would have said was, was needed for it, that was it. And somehow he misunderstood that. And it bugged me so much to not have peace between us that I actually took the guitar to his mom's house. And we were adults. I took it to his mom's house and I said, you know what? Tell him he can have it. Wow. I, don't, I would on, rather man. be at peace between my friend that I've known for a long time wow. than for him, he and I, to not be at peace and avoid each other wow. over something as silly as money or guitar. Absolutely. And so, wow. I just gave, I just that's gave him the that, guitar. That's a lot bigger than the $20 little uh, stained glass window pane that I kicked out uh, in order to be at peace. But that we're excited in, the, in this season, this Advent season, and just, I, we pray that it's a time of peace for you and for your families. Um, if we could just, we're in December 3rd through yep. December 9th in our reading, and I just want to point out the beauty of how Paul just... He walks into this and he begins speaking to the crowd. And he actually connects and establishes credibility with the crowd before mm -hmm. he shares the truth of Jesus' message. It's yeah. a strategy mm -hmm. I think the church is still using today. Um, sure. It's a strategy of communication where he, he comes before uh, the crowd and he addresses them in their own language, Aramaic. And yeah, he says, important. brothers and esteemed fathers, listen to me. And when they heard him speaking in their own language, their silence was even greater. So, yeah. so that, that, that spoke to them. He's connecting with them. Then he says, I'm a Jew. I was brought up an educated man. I became very zealous to honor God in everything I did, just like all of you today. He's just, he's, mm -hmm. he's establishing those lines of common ground. Common interest. Yeah. Yes, that he has with people. And it's a strategy. He does it here. Emory, you were pointing out that he does it a number of places. He does. He uh, does. In, it's, it's, throughout. it's his, his pattern. Evangelism. Uh, how he does evangelism. His strategy, yeah. He, he doesn't walk into a city and just say, you guys are ridiculous for how you believe. Mm -hmm. He looks for, for points of interest that he can build on. And in the passage that you're talking about today, he adds this other layer to it that is absolutely brilliant. So he's talking to a crowd made up of Pharisees who believe there is a resurrection yes. and, and Sadducees who do not. <laughs> and they do not like each other because of that thing. And he says, hey, I'm a Pharisee on trial for my belief in the resurrection. Yes, yes. And then all of a sudden, half the he crowd... He incites half of them, oh, absolutely. Yeah, they're like, hey, we can't do anything to this guy. Who knows if he hasn't seen a vision or heard a thing. All these things the Sadducees do not believe in, He's, uh, but the Pharisees do. But he has made himself an alliance with the Pharisees, yes. and now they're listening more than they would have listened because... They're identifying with him. Yes, with common interest again. Yeah, it's part of that strategy totally, that he continues. Totally he continues to use that strategy. It I totally think in somewhere is. else, uh, another place in scripture, he would say, "I become all things to all men, so that by yeah. all means I might save some." Absolutely. He Absolutely. does it in Rome. He does it. Yep. He, 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 he does it with the Jews. He just he, he does yeah, it Yeah, and, over and, and over. notice that the truth doesn't change. The yes. message doesn't yes. change. Yes, every, but yeah. he is looking at the audience with a genuine hope of them coming to a place of peace with Christ based on them. So here he's talking to Jews. Later on, he's going to talk to Romans as a Roman mm -hmm. because he really technically is Roman. Yes. And, and he is going to try to, he knows his audience. He's trying to 
open up their hearts, to open up a dialogue to allow him to get the message across. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If I if I jump into the to the next day, December fourth, uh, Paul appears before Felix. He appears before Festus, and he he appears before King Agrippa. Mm -hmm. um, Agrippa, in verse twenty eight of chapter twenty six, he is mildly entertained by Paul. His response mm -hmm. to the gospel is one of mild entertainment, and he literally says this. Um, Paul in 20, verse 27 says, King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. Agrippa interrupted him. Do you think you can persuade me to become a Christian so quickly? And Paul replies, whether quickly or not, I pray to God that both you and everyone here in this audience might become yeah. the same as I am, except for these except chains. Except for these chains. Except for these chains. And so, yeah. so I just thought, uh, it, your our response to the gospel matters so much. He he says, you, you almost persuadest thou me to be a Christian. Yeah. And, um, and I, I just wonder for all of us, what is our response to the gospel? Mm -hmm. how, how it matters more than anything what we believe and how we respond yeah. to the gospel. This is an e everlasting, uh, becoming eternal, uh, eternal issue. Yeah. That uh, will will um, determine our fate for eternity. So yeah. So it's super important. Super important. The, there's another uh, kind of principle at work here, with all the way back from when he's speaking to the crowd to when he's speaking to uh, Agrippa. There's a pattern that he, he he makes the case of this is who I was, and y'all know who I was. Mm. You know that that I was on the other side. This is who I was. Jesus appeared to me. And this is who I am. Mm. What he's doing is he's telling his story. And every one of us has yes, a story. Yes. This is who yes. I was. This is who I am. So that's what we call witnessing. And we're mm -hmm. called to be witnesses. Absolutely. That's what it means. We're called to, to say, this is my story. Yep. And he's telling his story to layer and layer of people as he proceeds on. Uh, honestly, because he told them, I'm a Roman and all the rules changed. Oh, oh yeah! Oh yeah! Say, hey, guess what? I'm a Roman. Oh, so under Roman I, law, I get trial. Yep. Yeah, you yep. can't hurt somebody. Yep. You can't beat somebody. You can't do all these things that, that to a Roman without there being a trial. And his Ro Roman citizenship was from birth and not purchased. It was. He didn't buy so it. it. Right. So yeah. it even it even ran a little bit more deeply and pure. So and he uses that. He leverages that to get the gospel to Rome. Mm -hmm. And he and he gets taken to Rome in in quite. Amazing fashion. Yeah. Um, uh, man, we're, I'm looking here at my notes. I think it's uh, 200 foot soldiers, 70 mounted horsemen, yeah. 200 spearsmen that are taking him. The, the, the governor, Felix, uh, says he, we need to protect him because I think there was a group of Jews that were trying to kill him. Yeah. And so Felix is trying to protect him and sends him on. Um, mm -hmm. But it was quite an entourage that Paul had. And then he goes on the, the storm happens at sea as he sails for Rome. Yep. Um, the angel tells Paul that nobody would be lost. They throw everything overboard and eat a final meal. Oh, actually, they eat a final breakfast, throw everything yeah. overboard. And they, is that when they land on the island of Malta? They do. Yes. And that's just, a, yes. that's just an awesome story. <laughs> it is. Like, I don't have a great application for how you're going to live that out a, in your a life. snake latches on. A snake and everybody's like, oh, Whoa. he's cursed He's a murderer. the sea tried to kill him. The sea tried to kill him and it couldn't. Now a snake is coming out. And then it's like, he just like rips the snake off and tosses it. And then he doesn't, he and doesn't he's swallow finally, it. Oh, you're a god. Right. Which, yeah. which happens often in this culture. Yeah. You know, they, they had to, it was numerous times, we've talked about in our podcast previously, oh, sure. where yeah. um, they were in Ephesus, was it in Ephesus? I believe where they says, oh, they you, uh, they come before him and, chant, and they were chanting for that he was gods or no. Yeah, now, well, there's so many different places, like uh, whenever, like they see a healing that takes place. Yes, all of a sudden, yes. Uh, well, you are, Ze you are Zeus. Yes, yes, he is yes, Hermes. Yes, that was it. That was it. Yes, <laughs> you know? yes. It was in, I think it was in Ephesus. And they're just they trying yes. to attribute the miraculous mm -hmm. instead of to Jesus, yes. to them, which is like horrifying to and them. And he says, oh, we're just mere, we're mere yeah, humans. We're people like you. We're, we're people just like you. Yes. And they tell the truth in the gospel of Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, so then he gets to Rome and... 
pay attention to the passing of time. The passing of time marks faithfulness. Mm. Oh, my land. He gets to Rome. Mm. For the next two years, yes. Paul lived in Rome at his own expense, paying his own bill, boldly proclaiming the kingdom of God. And this is awesome. And no one tried to stop him. Hmm. So he leverages his very life to get mm -hmm. to Rome. God uses that. Uh, he's in prison, but he's under a house arrest, so people yes. can come and go. And does he use that time for one of a hundred different things? No. It's all about so people can come to him. In Rome, the center of the world, think of Rome at this time, bigger than anything you can think of. Think of it as bigger than New York City. It's mm -hmm. bigger, more influential than Tokyo, Yokohama. It is, the, it is the center of the known world. Yes. And it's all purposeful. If I've got the gospel, where do I want to go? To the place where then it can be heard and spread throughout the world. You know, one thing I will say I love about the chronological Bible, Emery, is if I would have done like a, uh, a New Testament, uh, which I, I've done a number of these classes through the years, yeah. uh, through Bible college mm -hmm. and such, but if I would have done like a... a, a New Testament, New Testament survey type class. Yeah. I would have said, oh yeah, here's where uh, Acts fits, here's where Ephesians fits. Yeah. But whenever we read it like this and see uh, this uh, this awaiting here yeah. in Acts um, under house arrest, mm -hmm. and then you see Ephesians 1. Yeah. It makes, for me, it makes everything that he's saying about Christ literally times a million in, uh, yeah. in brightness. In It just light, it illuminates it so much that he's literally being put on trial for what he believes about in yeah. Jesus Christ uh, with the Jews. Mm -hmm. And then he's literally saying, it's all about Christ. I'm telling you, yeah. it's, it is While all about prison, Christ. Yes. It's all about it's Christ. It's all about Christ. Yeah. This is what I'm being imprisoned for. Yeah. And, and, it, and I'm telling you, it's all about Christ. I, I think that has been so valuable, and we've talked about it before. I, I kind of, in my head, I have this analogy that I think of. I think of the book of Acts almost like Acts is a tree trunk and the letters are the branches. Mm. It's because, like, like Don said, like without just having read through the Bible a lot of times, uh, they seem like disjointed. But the truth is, uh, Ephesians and Colossians, uh, this is how Paul was thinking at the time of his imprisonment yes. in Rome. Huge. Huge. Yeah, it wasn't like he's writing Ephesians from Ephesus or Colossians from Colossae. This is how he's thinking when he is... And what To other people, it would seem like the hugest dark moment. I'm in prison by myself. Right. In the most it's notorious all hopeless. Stronghold. It's all hopeless. Yeah. It's all hopeless. Yeah. It's hopeless. But that's not the way he yeah. responds. It's hopeless for somebody else, but it's not hopeless for the person whose number one goal is to get the gospel into the biggest centers so that they can then spread it throughout the known universe. For him, it's like, yeah, this is awesome. I'm where I want to be. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that takes a lot of faithfulness, a lot of guts. But that's uh, the backdrop under which. Ephesians uh, is written, and Colossians is written. And he's going to do this through all of his imprisonments to do that. I love going on to Ephesians. Uh, I just love, for one thing, the New Living Translation of this passage that you've probably heard a lot of times and other things, but uh, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. This is a gift from God. I love this translation. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. Mm -hmm. So none of us can boast about it. I want you to think of his audience, and you can still think of us today. His audience, well, the Israelites, very much. Heaven was a reward yeah. for the things that I've done. Yes. I'm offering the correct sacrifices. I'm obeying the law in these particular ways. And so I'm doing these things. When I do things, what happens as a result is my reward mm -hmm. of doing things. And he's just so bold out of the gate with this. No, it's, it's not because of what you've done. Mm. So later on in 2.15, he did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. You oh, are man. where you are mm -hmm. in Christ because of what he did for you, not Praise because God. of what you somehow Praise think God. you did for him or what your ability 
to keep the rules. Christ. That, it, praise God for that. In verse 13, right there, as, as of Ephesians 2, once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him mm -hmm. through the blood of Christ. First week of yeah. Advent right here. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. Yeah. Um, in verse 15, he made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from two groups. He has made us whole is what has yeah. happened here. He's brought the good news of peace. Gentiles were far away and the peace of the Jews. Uh, we've, we've been brought near and we all yeah. can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because yeah. of what Christ has done for us. I, I love what you said. Uh, what the scripture says there, words are important. You were far off, but you were brought, brought near. near. It doesn't say you were far off, but you decided to make the Walk trip. Near. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep, yep. You were brought near. You were brought near by, by him. And, yeah. then, and like you said, so then there's this thing that is not as huge to us as it should be, but to them, it was ginormous. So this is God's plan. Both Jews and Gentiles who believe the good news share equally in the riches inherited by God's children. Both are part of the same body. Both enjoy the promise of blessings because they belong to Jesus Christ. Uh, to a, a first century Jewish audience, saying that the, the Jews and the Gentiles are on equal footing with God was a radical, mm -hmm. radical statement. Mm -hmm. And for the, Jew, for the Gentiles, it was an awesome gift. Absolutely. To them, you're saying we're equal with God's people mm -hmm. who have been God's people throughout history. Like we're as good as them. Yes. Yeah. What a gift. Yeah, because that because any goodness that you have, any righteousness that you, that you have came from Christ. Mm -hmm. It's in him that we have those. And in him, he knocks down all the dividing walls Absolutely. of the us's and the them's. And in the process of knocking down the dividing walls... We take Ephesians 4 in context, not just for mm -hmm. us, but for them. Yeah. And he says, so I call you to unity in the body of Christ. Yeah, I don't absolutely. just I don't just knock down walls. That, that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a level. And yeah. now he says, I need you to unify now yeah. and actually come together and realize you're the body of Christ. Yeah. You're not just not divided. You're united. Yeah. And I think it's very powerful, very powerful for them and for us. Yeah, and I think it's the outgrowth, outgrowth of that. I knocked down the walls for you. Now live out mm, that unity mm, that I purchased mm, for you. Solid. And honestly, I, I'm going to tell you, I don't think that we place as high a standard on unity as God does. Ooh, does. ooh, ooh. Tell us more, Emery. Uh, you know, we live in the United States. We live in a world of individuality. Mm-hmm. We don't live in a collectivist society. We don't live in the culture, not the Christian culture, but the culture around us is not bent on how can I make someone else's day awesome? Mm -hmm. Or how can I, and having, having that idea of peace, like you said, peace being a uh, right relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like our culture doesn't teach that having right relationship between two people is more important than my own self-interest. No. They teach it does not. That I'm, I'm most important. Yeah, that's what, I, cult, I that's what culture I teaches. I need to win. Uh, in, in direct opposition to what the Bible teaches, Absolutely. And what Christ teaches. But um, we've been called to that unity. Yes. In Ephesians 5, imitate God. I love this. Mm -hmm. It's like, I want to be like God. I fail. I need the righteousness and the blood of Christ mm -hmm. to pour over me and to keep uh, making me more like his son. Mm -hmm. But sure. here's the goal. For us, imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love. Follow the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. And then he goes on and he gives just a, 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 li just a, a, a list of things. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, greed among you. Uh, obscene stories, foolish talk, coarse jokes, they're not for you. Uh, instead, be thankful. It's like he just, he's saying, here's how you should live. Here's yeah. how we should live. If you're going to live in Christ, it looks like this. And so I just want to remind us that, man, that to live a life worthy of Christ, we're to imitate God. It's like if I just said, imitate Jesus in everything you do, yeah. shut the book, uh, yep. press, press, Finish, we're done, Emery. Yeah. I mean, that could really, if we could find, it's like we're trying to find ways to apply that 
mm-hmm. with into our lives. But really, the goal is imitate Christ, imitate God in everything you do. Absolutely, it's an overarching statement. I love this. So, there, so there's this concept at work. When you want someone to uh, to change a behavior, as a therapist, when you want someone mm-hmm. to change a behavior, or or as a parent, when you you want your kids to do things differently. Uh, it doesn't work to just say stop doing this, mm-hmm. right? It's it's more like st- stop doing this. Instead, do this. Mm. So the, the passage that you just read is followed by well, in, in Colossians three, uh, starting at verse twelve. Basically, it's instead you must clothe clothe yourself yes. with tender hearted yes. mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, making allowance for each other's faults. Forgiving one, anyone who offends you, remember that the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Mm-hmm. And let the peace, that word again, that comes from Christ, mm. because we couldn't purchase it ourselves, mm-hmm. rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you were called to live in peace Amen. and always Amen. be Amen. thankful. Amen. That's solid. Beautiful scripture. It that's is. what they're calling them to that they instead are. of this. Yes, absolutely. And, and that's why, and you see it in other places, even in today's reading, when it calls us to renew our renew our thoughts and renew our attitudes. That means stop thinking like this. Start thinking like this. Mm-hmm. You were dead. You mm-hmm. are alive. People that are alive think differently than people who are dead in their sins. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, hey, let me leave you with just this. And, and I love, once he gives us the... The particulars, he kind of caps it off with this in verse uh, 17. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to him through God the Father. I love to put that verse next to the verse that says that we are Christ's ambassadors, as yes. if Christ were making an His appeal, appeal through, through us. Us. Amen. So what an awesome responsibility. Solid. The God of the universe Solid. loves you so much and wants to include you in his plan so much mm-hmm. that he's sending you out there with the opportunity and the privilege to be an ambassador and a representative of the one who took you from being dead in your sins and making you alive in Christ. Mm-hmm. So what an awesome privilege. Live that out this week. And we're so glad that you're continuing on with us. If you're going to finish, make sure you go to the app and register. We want to know that you made it all the way through. That is a big, big thing. So we love you and are so glad to do this with you. And you can celebrate this with Don. (laughs) And then we will see you on Sunday.